Hello everyone, welcome to the Lobster Labs Recap. I'm your host Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and we are starting this out with what was the round, or one of the round one matches from the Lobster Labs tournament. For those of you not familiar, the Lobster Labs tournament is the kind of in-between season tournament for the Lobster Roll series, and this one happened two days ago. I wasn't available at the time, so we're doing recaps, and we'll be probably going forward because it doesn't actually conflict with my schedule right now. So... For the time being, expect recaps for the Lobster Roll series as it comes, but this was the first tournament. It was a Swiss tournament, and first round being a Swiss tournament, of course, all the players played. One of the matches being Steel Blue and Thirsty, which was on Titan Duel. Steel Blue going for tanks against rovers from Thirsty, which on Titan Duel, yeah, it, you always get light vehicles. This is, or not light vehicles specifically, they be rovers. You always get vehicles. It's the occasional game where you get cloak bots, but... That isn't typical. What we're seeing now, much more typical. So, Dart Scout coming in here does see that Guardian Commander has been built up. So, a little careful, but more importantly, able to stop that drone from really doing all that much well. The Dart's able to scout with impunity, which eh, works well enough for Thurks. Steel Blue. They are getting a Kodachi up. Won't have to worry too much about that Dart for much longer, but then again, the Dart did find information. Now, Scorcher coming in afterwards. Looks like pure Scorch from Thurk's not going for Scorcher Dart, which I think, I mean, generally you should go with Scorcher Dart. The Slow Beam in the Dart provides so much potential for the Scorcher because you can just rush in right on the slowed units with the Scorcher, and, I mean, Scorchers deal more damage close up, so it all works out. Though against Tank, that may be a little bit hard to pull off because of the Kodachi's fire weapons. See what happens, though. Kodachi doing his best to stay out of range. So both Kodachi and Sc Scorcher desperately trying to avoid each other's range, just just posturing. Steel Blue just trying to keep Thirksy out of their base, but Thirksy's trying to find ways in, and it looks like one of the Scorchers may indeed find a way. Going by Steel Blue's commander, though, also by a Lotus here. I don't see that happening, and Thirksy does not either. So, a little bit of a soft contain coming here from Thirks. Steel Blue. Doesn't appear too worried about it, and Thurks, they are expanding reasonably quickly, though. Certainly looking to take advantage of the fact that they have put a bit of a contain on Steel Blue. It's not a particularly large one, and I don't know how long it's going to last if Steel Blue decides to break out of it, which they are getting a couple of Kodachis. Looks like they are trying to do exactly that. Dart coming in. Oof, unable to get close enough for the beam, to slow beam. That might actually end up being the decisive part of this battle. In fact, I think it will end up being the decisive part of this battle. We'll see if the Kodachis are able to get through, how much damage they're able to do, because so far, they're doing pretty well for themselves. I mean, they don't have to worry about too much. At the same time, though, there is now threats coming into Steel Blue's base. They don't obviously want to have to pull back their Kodachis, but they are able to get some Masons in the process, so it still works out. Second Kodachi, however, will likely go down here, and indeed it does. At the cost of one Mason, that's pretty fair trade, honestly. I think that was a fairly even trade. Broke the contain. Got rid of a, one of the greedy masons. Left a bunch of reclaim, however, but that's fine. I mean, the reclaim value doesn't make up for the, what was lost. And again, the mason was lost. That is big. And that's going to be... Like, this metal extractor isn't going to be built up as quickly. And basically the entire center of the map is going to be built up as quickly. Thirksy looks like they're trying to reestablish their contain. But for now, they are not really having it. There's not much they can actually do, Thirksy. Five Scorchers, but most of them are damaged. If there weren't for the damage, the Scorchers would be able to easily take on... Well, two Scorchers would have been able to take on that welder before the Lotus is built, but... Five Scorchers would be fine. It's just, again, that damage. Scorchers don't auto-repair, so they would rely on being repaired by something else, and that's... Feels like the way Thirksy is building up. They are trying to be fairly expansionistic, and that expansion-oriented play is fine as long as you keep your units alive. But at the same time, it's not like it's they're able to slow down Steel Blue much. It's kind of their choice right now. It's either lose units and try to go fully aggressive in order to stop Steel Blue from expanding, or try to expand themselves and then commit to playing the long game. And it looks like they're committing to playing the long game. Switching over to Fencers as well. Like actually part of their build right now, just Fencer Scorcher. 
Not a bad choice as far as having the Blitzes come in there, though. This might not matter. The Blitz Kodachi going down. The second Kodachi goes down. The Blitz is soon to follow. He's trying his best to stun away the Scorchers, but simply can't. There was too many Scorchers there. Steel Blue having lost their, former, their forward army. Doesn't really have to worry, though. They have enough Lotuses that this is simply not going to be a threat. Taking out one of Thirks' Scorchers for free. And that leaves Thirks unable to execute much of a contain at all on Steel Blue. So ultimately, that was kind of a neutral fight. Thirks are continuing to push forward, trying to keep that contain going, but so far, it's now just a matter of how much reclaim there's in the center. About 600 metal kind of hanging out. No one's really able to easily grab it. It's a little closer to Steel Blue, though. They have a welder right here. Whereas everything for Thirksy is a fair bit of ways away. So right now, Thirksy kind of... Kind of falling behind. Not to mention, Steel Blue is expanding faster. Despite having been early, contained earlier on. Or soft contained earlier on. Again, this is what I mean. Thirk simply wasn't able to build up as quickly as they otherwise would have been able to. And that's... They're falling behind as a result. So Fencer unable to do too much. The Blitz does not go down. Oof. So close, too. Oh, if it hadn't retargeted, that Blitz would be dead. Not that it would have mattered. The Fencer would still be down. But at the very least, it wouldn't be something to repair. That's, that is 300 metal. It's not... Not going to be a waste of time to repair that. Steel Blue... I think they're now realizing just how little Thirksy has expanded. I mean, Steel Blue's really getting this advantage going. They haven't quite managed to take the reclaim field over here, but they're... I mean, they have the ma the welder right there. They could very easily take it, although right now, Thirksy is the only one taking reclaim. And in fact, that's the only thing keeping them even close to parity with Steel Blue. Is the reclaim. Sadly, though, it is going entirely next, as we are getting some solar collectors being built up. Steel Blue a bit ahead on that, and that will translate to a much larger army within the next minute or two. Honestly, Steel Blue is looking like they're having a pretty good time. They're not going to be worried about what's going on with their defenses, because not a whole lot that Thirksy has can break through the Lotus Walls right now. And they have a nice little army coming in to take out Thirksy's commander. The Blitzes should be able to EMP it pretty shortly. There's the EMP. Kodashi's coming in as well to finish things off. And that... That should be that. Thirsty's commander goes down. Some of the Scorchers go down in response. But that is fine. The entire army goes down, but Thirsty losing their commander means they've lost pretty much all the ability to affect anything on the map, the eastern side of the map. There are no Masons there. Their army is there. But nothing has been built up yet. So now a Mason will have to be pulled in with the army to protect it. This is perfect for Steel Blue. Not to mention, of course, the storage. That's 500 metal that just went nowhere because Thirsty's commander died. So Steel Blue sitting pretty after that kill. Still has their army going, of course, with a fairly large economic advantage. They aren't too concerned about having to rebuild their army. And that seems to be the exact play here. Just don't really worry about the army. Worry instead about the stack defenses. So you can get that welder through and just start building up and then reclaiming. Because this was 1.2k metal reclaim. And there's basically no way for Thirks to get that. They have no masons nearby. And actually, this one's idle. It's unfortunate. But yeah, the rest of their forces are kind of all over the place. And now kind of stuck. And now, now forced back as Steel Blue able to take the northeast corner. Having already taken the southwest corner, Steel Blue's got a nearly insurmountable economic advantage going for them. Thirksy, they do have some reclaim they could theoretically work They had some reclaim they could theoretically work with. Unfortunately, this army here, Kodachis and Blitzes, are just pr providing way too much of a threat. Now the contained situation is somewhat reversed. Thirksy still has a reasonable army to counter this with. I don't really agree with using Scorchers in this context, though. Fencers are fine. Scorchers I can see is kind of a meat shield, but they just don't quite last long enough. See, coming in here, though, they do manage to get through... Some of the army, but half the army goes down for Steel Blue, but it's at quite a bit of cost. Although, to be fair, that does actually put a put 1.2k metal reclaim closer to Thirksy. Son of Mason picked that up, and then that'll be a little bit better for them. But I mean, the moment that Steel Blue builds an ogre, Thirksy is dead. And Thirksy does not look like they're going for anything to really counter that. They're going for an Antbot factory, though. Not quite sure what the Antbot factory would accomplish here. 
The only thing I can think of would just be having a bunch of ducks. Just use that as a way of catching the blitz of fire. Especially at this point, it's looking like it may not be necessary. Scorchers are in large enough numbers. They are becoming enough of a threat. They can break out. Steelu's got to be careful here. So far, they're just feeding reclaimed as Thirxy. Thirxy still not quite able to break out of this. But Steel Blue can't attack with impunity either. And Emissary unable to really find all that much damage. Oh, and the, is the Mason going to get killed F? No, the Mason should be fine. The Mason will be fine. Scorches are coming in. Will be able to hear the Emissary. That is a nice blow. Actually, the Mason, the Welder, not Mason, sorry. The Welder does go down to the Fencer. So ultimately, Steel Blue kind of... They're playing very cocky. They do have a fairly large economic advantage, so I can see why. It's just this is a very forward play, and it's working out, but that's entirely because of the economic advantage. And Thirxy looking to try to get rid of some of that, but they just don't have the units to really go through and take out all the metal extractors. Not to mention the overdrive, not to mention the reclaim fields that haven't even been taken yet. I mean, still is going to be going for those as soon as they can, but... Yeah, and at the same time, Thirxy losing their own metal extractors, so ultimately the harassment coming in from Thirxy just isn't doing all that much, relatively. Seeing... Ah, boys, for the slow damage. That also makes sense. Though I don't know why they didn't just go for darts, but alright. Boys are tankier, so I can see the logic there. Boy Ripper, okay. Similar... Similar approach. Ripper definitely better for, obviously, mass units. The boy... Again, the slow damage is the main reason I could see going with the boy there. Not bad timing, either, with the ogres coming in. Though I can't remember if the boy outranges the ogre. Oops. Yeah. Yeah, the boy definitely outranges the ogre. As we can see, the boy outranges the ogre by quite a lot, actually. So with that, the boy should be able to work out here. But unfortunately, there's only two of them. And a couple of rippers. And the Scorchers are otherwise dead. So this is just Steel Blue looking to just march right into Thirxy's base. This double ogre here, not a whole lot's actually going to threaten them. Only two boys. And there's still a ton of Kodachis coming in. A ton of Kodachis and Blitzes that could come in and take those boys out. I mean, the Rippers, they're there to stop that. Or try to, at least. But unfortunately, it's simply not enough. It's a matter of numbers at this point. Even with the right type. I mean, the thing is with Rippers, you need to have two or three of them to actually take out an army reasonably well. Otherwise, they just deal damage and then die. It's unfortunately the consequence of them being a high alpha unit. Fire off one powerful shot and then stop. Same time, the boys able to slow down the Ogres. Like literally slow them down, so that does help out quite a bit. The Rippers able to get a little more value for themselves. Wiping out the support force. The Ogres are still in play, but the boys have the numbers to actually deal with this. The Scorchers coming in. They are not playing this smart. The Scorchers... Ah, oh, unfortunately, this is not the type to, unit to use against Ogres. They, they die. They die very quickly. And this still looks dire. One of the Ogres does go down. There's still boys up. The Ogres remain. The reinforcements are on their way for Steel Blue. Thirxy just barely managing to hold on to their own base. Ogre looks to be unable to escape, though. And indeed, it is getting trapped out by the slow damage. And that is going to be it for that Ogre. It's all Ogre now. 1.71k, though. It's really that holds more for Thirxy than Steel Blue. Again, there's Reclaim, and there is some Reclaim being taken, but unless two of the Caretakers are going for this Reclaim field alongside the Masons, there's not a whole lot that can be done to actually pull this metal in. Oh, well, but that's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> it's exactly what's going on here. They're actually realizing they actually desperately need that at least as much as they can. Unfortunately, Caretakers only have such a limited range. But... Still, getting those boys up. They will at least counter the Ogres. The Kodachis coming in afterwards are 
not as much of a threat. The Rippers are here to counter that, too, so this should be okay. Thunderbird, however, coming in, and that is going to end it. That is game. Thunderbird comes in, stuns or disarms everything. That's it. Thurxy throws in the towel, and that was round... That was round one. Of course, this was a Swiss tournament, so that just gives Steel Blue a point. But yeah, Steel Blue ends up getting a point. So we're going to have the next round in a sec, which will be represented by a match between Bloa and Dave on Cobalt Dream. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in... Is there something wrong here? Oh. Yes, there is. So, stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a couple minutes. <laughs> 